and welcome to High School Physics Explained and today I would like to have a brief discussion on GPE or gravitational potential energy. So before we start I want to talk a little bit briefly what is gravitational potential energy before I move on to the issues of gravitational potential energy in large scale systems such as in space. So here I've got little Teddy over here and Teddy sitting on the ground and we all know that if I lift Teddy up into the air I have raised its gravitational potential energy. Now how did I do that? Well of course I did that because I applied work onto Teddy and so we all know that in order to raise this change in gravitational potential energy we have to do work and in to do work I have to apply a force and I have to multiply it by a certain distance. Now in this case my force that I apply onto Teddy is equal to Teddy's weight so that is mg and the height that I lift Teddy of course is the height that is from here to here and as a result that is the height over here and so as a result you can see that gravitational potential energy or more correctly the change in Teddy's gravitational potential energy is equal to mgh Okay, so clearly the gravitational potential energy is higher the further it is away from the Earth and it's lower down here. Now it's not zero down here, um, we're only dealing with the change and I'll deal with that in a second. But clearly lifting it up will give us a positive change of gravitational potential energy because it's higher up here and lower down here. And then if I were to put Teddy back down again like so, then the change is now not an upward direction but a downward direction and so in that case my change in my gravitational potential energy is not a positive mgh but it is a negative mgh that is we do negative work so to speak because my change my final is smaller than my initial and so i have a negative value as a result so lifting them up away from the earth gives me a positive change in gravitational potential energy bringing him down gives him a negative change in gravitational potential energy. Now the thing is that's really important to understand is, is that when we lift Teddy up and put Teddy down there are a couple of things that don't change in this situation. It's obviously his mass doesn't change so his mass is constant and we are assuming that the acceleration due to gravity the g value is also the same. So if I lift Teddy up and put him down, I'm expecting that the G value of 9.8 meters per second squared is the same up here as it is down here. And that's okay for a small situation here in the field over here by the road. But what if we now look at a situation where Teddy is lifted up a little bit more? Now the same rules apply in that is, if I were to lift Teddy up, I have to do, an ink, I have to do work. And so the work that is done is equal to the change in potential energy and that is equal to, in our case of course, um, and I'll just move that down because it's sort of out of our view, so I'll just bring that a little bit down there, you can see it, okay, is that the change is equal to the m you could say that's a mass multiplied by the acceleration due to gravity multiplied by the height and this is the height. But we have a problem here. In large scale systems we all know that the gravitational acceleration is going to get weaker as we go up. So this formula doesn't cut it for a change in gravitational potential energy. Okay, so what is the value of g? Well the g value is dependent on how much I lifted by. And what is that value? Well, let's move it aside here and remind ourselves that if I work out the force due to gravity, that is equal to the gravitational formula G m1 m2 over r squared. And that is of course the weight of Teddy. So, and I'll put this a dash here because it changes. So clearly my acceleration due to gravity now becomes G m1 m2 over R, okay, and you see my mass is gone, and my mass is gone here, so I've got to get rid of this particular mass over here, and of course I've got R squared. So you can see now that the acceleration of due to gravity is not a constant value, it varies, depends on how much I change R by. So as a result, we need to substitute that in. So 
the work done, the change in gravitational potential energy is equal to the mass of Teddy, right? Multiplied by the G value as it changes. So this G will obviously change. So I get G M uh, one over R squared, right? But of course, that's the mass, that's the G value, and then we have to multiply by the H value, which is the height that we lifted by. When we clean that up, you can see that the change in gravitational potential energy is equal to G M1 M2 over R. Okay, this is a distance, these are distance squared, so they cancel out. And so therefore the change in gravitational potential energy increases as we go up. So this, remember, this is change. That's fine, that gives us change, but it doesn't actually tell me what the gravitational potential energy is here or what it is here. And that's the next thing I want to talk about because all this I have told you is how much does it change by. So if I lift Teddy up, clearly I increase it. If I bring Teddy down, I decrease it and I should get, therefore, if I go, let's say, in the negative direction, I put Teddy back down again, then the change in gravitational potential energy is equal to negative G M1 M2 over R. Okay? So the question is, what is the actual value of gravitational potential energy. We've got to get a negative value if we change it. So the thing is, it's pretty easy to work out that the actual value of gravitational potential energy will end up being this value if we start at zero. In other words, that this is the change, the final minus the initial, and if that's the change, and we want to know that this value is this value over here, then we have to start at zero to make this true. So how does that work? Well, here's Teddy. And we ask ourselves, if we move Teddy from a certain distance that like we're increasing Teddy's gravitational potential energy, the question is, is at what point does Teddy's gravitational potential energy equal zero? So where is GPE equal to zero? Well, of course, the only place that is equal to zero is where there is no gravity at all. Well, in the universe, of course, filled with matter, there is no place where there is a place where there is totally zero gravitational potential energy, because if that is true, then the distance has to be infinity to get to that value. So in other words, the force due to gravity, of course, is equal to G M1 M2 over R squared. If we want that to equal zero, then that's got to be an infinite number. So that's basically what we say. We say, okay, GPE is equal to zero at infinity. So that means if I take Teddy and I put him over here and I apply work to move him a closer distance like so, so in that case, I've got a movement over there then obviously my change in gravitational potential energy is equal to the potential energy final minus the potential energy initial, right? And the final here, we've established, if we make the initial over here equal zero, then the change here, which we already established was negative G M1 M2 over R, and this has to be negative G M1 M2 over R. So the value of, of Teddy's gravitational potential energy is equal to the work done by moving Teddy from a point of infinity to a point above the Earth. That's the definition of gravitational potential energy. The work done, because we're starting at infinity, it ends up being a negative value because the change goes from a high value to a low value. And so clearly, it's, everything still fits. If I increase the distance, I'm raising the gravitational potential energy. This is a really large negative number. This ends up being a really small negative number. I'm getting closer and closer to zero. So clearly, I am increasing my gravitational potential energy. Okay, and I'm doing work. And if I work out the change, I get here my final value is a small negative number. Here my initial value is a large negative number. When I subtract the two, I'll get a positive change. Similarly, over here I have a large negative number. 
over here, I have a small negative number. If I do this, my change will be a negative value. Why? Because my final negative number, large, minus my small negative number over here, will give me an overall negative number. What happens now if I then graph the results? So now let's graph the results. So here's my potential energy. We already established that the potential energy is always negative and the only time it's zero is when it's at infinity. Well, that means we get a graph that looks like this. It's a really large negative number close to the Earth, okay? But it's getting close to zero when we get close to infinity. As a result, my graph is going to be a hyperbola and it will be negative as it approaches zero. That is consistent with the formula. That is, if I now take the formula, remember that the gravitational potential energy is equal to negative gm1 m2 over r, you can see that because all of this here is constant, it does not change, then what I end up getting is that my g, so you can see here that my gpe is proportional to a negative 1 over r. As r gets bigger, this gets smaller over here. And so that is consistent with this graph. I hope that gives you a better understanding of gravitational potential energy. I hope you found that video useful. And remember, like, share and subscribe. Oh, and if you have a comment or a question, or you'd like a concept for me to explain to you, please drop a comment down below. I'm Paul from High School Physics Explained. Bye for now.